I see it's foggy and cold in Nottingham. Barbara, good morning everybody in North America. And it's windy in Latvia. Wow, <laughs> isn't it nice when you get those cold days that you can just snuggle up and be indoors, and have the warmth of the heating and everything. Uh, not be in the gazebo with the wind blowing. Um, today's theme is I am so happy you are you are mine. And it's taken from Song of Songs, chapter 3 and verse 4. I've got to tell you, this book, Song of Songs, is really opened up to me. I, I've got to confess, I never really delved into it in, in, with much, you know, with apart from the odd verse, but um, since we've been doing these daily devotionals, um, and it's come up quite a bit in in this journal that we're following in this devotional by Brian Simmons called "I Hear His Whisper." Um, it, I've just been so blessed. I I, I can't say anything else. It's, it's so life transforming to realise that it's a love relationship, and often we think, don't we, about the love relationship being one way, God loving us and or us loving God. But, you know, it's a two way thing. He loves us so much. And I think the Song of Songs really brings that out and is life changing when you get the revelation of it. And especially if you get into the Hebrew letters, I, I was studying something this morning apart from, you know, our theme. And it was, uh, you know, the creation of man the fact that God created man, but he formed woman. And that word formed in Hebrew means, <laughs> it means it means he built a woman out of the rib of the man. But it also means in the root, uh, the woman has intuition. Uh, and they say that, don't they? A woman's intuition. Uh, so she's different to man, but she has that intuition. I often say to Jean, when Jean says something to me about, you know, talking about intuition, I say, how can you know that? How can you say that you don't know? You don't, you've never seen. Say like she's, she has been a protection for me. Um, you know, she protects, uh, she's, she's not my covering, but uh, she's my radar. And... Um, Oftentimes she'll pick things up and warn me, you know, just be careful there in this area or that area. And uh, I say, how can you know that? How can you know that? But if you get into the Hebrew, if you get into the DNA, because that's what it is, really. It's the DNA of the scriptures. It's the codes. And a code is something that is hidden. And it unlocks it. The code unlocks the hidden things. And uh, and I thought, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, we men are, are well, I'm, I'm headlines and Jean likes the detail. She likes the detail. So there we go. Anyway, uh, greetings to everybody. Let, let's say hello to a few people and then we'll go to the word. Uh, we also want to pray for, it's our last day today, and we want to pray for Australia. And then next week, want to pray for um, Japan. And uh, isn't it interesting? See, around the world in 80 days. <laughs> we can go around the world in the spirit. Now, I have to watch my time tonight because I have to pick John Mark up, you know, for our, it, he, on a Friday he comes and cooks for us. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Aren't your kids wonderful? He comes and cooks the meal for us and I have to pick him up. He's got a delivery coming. So I couldn't pick him up earlier. And and so um, I have to keep, I have to try my very best not to go over if we can help it. So I tell you, I can hear somebody saying, well, stop yapping then and get to the point. <laughs> uh, let's go over and see who we've got then. And I'm going to go to the globe because it just gives us a visual of where um, things are coming from get this thing that's it uh where things are coming from or where people are coming from and uh, barbara was the very first one on my board and um, by the way bobs i know you wrote to me and you're coming up on the 16th um we will leave it to you to contact us on what day you you know i suppose the first day you'll want to rest 
but just you know if we take it day by day and you just let us know we'll just keep that uh 10 days or whatever it is free um and just be flexible so we'll go with whatever you you say to us and richardson uh hi everyone from kendall lake district they call it the lake district for those of you in the states because it's lakes it's where wordsworth uh wrote some of his stuff um is it is, is he a poet yes i think he was yeah uh it's where wordsworth uh had his place and wrote uh wonderful countryside there um margie hogg from uh Oklahoma from Broken Arrow. I see, Margie, you're flying in for the partners meeting in Florida. <laughs> uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I was looking. Never mind. I can't get into it. Uh, I've got to watch my. I've got to watch my time here. Um, Major Folkman, greetings from Windy Latvia. Greetings to you, Major, and Doug and uh, Laura. So good to see you on from Brentford, Ontario, Canada. Blessings and more blessings for all of us. God's love is always good. We receive that. We receive that blessing, Doug and Laura. We receive it right now in the name of Yeshua. Um, oh, Joyce, uh, they're expecting snow in North Carolina. That's unusual, isn't it, Joyce? Don't usually get a lot of snow in North Carolina. Usually your winters are quite, well, you know, not too below freezing. Gail Ann from it. Oh, chilly Florida. Chilly Florida. Wow. <laughs> it's usually the sunshine. Kimo, good evening. We have also strong winds and icy roads. Tell me, Kimo, do you have snow tires like they have in uh, Canada? We don't have snow tires here because we don't have that much snow. And when it does come, an inch, just an inch of snow stops everything. Um, El, Ma El, El Maria Van. A squeaking something that's a mouthful, El Maria. What you do you have in an a short uh do they call you Maria? Um anyway, from South Africa. Uh good evening to you. Uh Jella from um uh sorry, Jell from <laughs> from Cardiff, a beautiful city in Wales, south of Wales. Um and the rest of us, you, I love the way you cover everything there, Jella. Madeline Kirby, a expat from England. Hello from Florida. Lived there 30 odd years, eh, Madeline? Uh, Judith Boone, greetings from Kansas City. Expecting snow tonight. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, it's winter, isn't it? It's winter here. What can we do? What can we do? Uh, my mother-in-law always used to say she was glad when February was out because when February is out, we're coming, we're turning the corner into spring. Uh, Luann from Nebraska. Uh, good morning to you, Luann. Uh, and Julie Groves, good evening from the UK. We're about in the UK, Julie. I know you've been on before. Your name's familiar. Uh, Rosie, uh, good evening to you, Rosie. Uh, I see Jella knows you because she's saying hi. Uh, oh, Kimo, it's mandatory to have winter tyres on cars, often with spikes. Wow, wow, it's not mandatory here, Kimo. Uh, so when do you put those on? Have you got those on now? Oh, do you have to put them on before the snow arrives? Anyway, there we go. So we've got quite a little bit of a flavour there, haven't we? Um, now... I was telling you um, what our reading is, and I'm just seeing if I brought a glass of water. I can guarantee there'll be always something that I forget. It's a bit like when I go on a trip and I'm packing. Um, I always forget something. <laughs> and what can I do? I try my very best, but what is it? Your best is not good enough, is it? Um, okay, let's go to the reading and i tell you what we're going to do. We're going to write out the verse and then we're going to have a look at the overview of this because there are some wonderful things here uh, for us to look at. And uh, I'm going to take a pen and paper. I've got my pad slightly on the side because I'm, I'm writing this out. The text is, you can, sh you can just put an S for songs with a dot. 
Song of Songs, chapter 3, and verse 4. That's our text. But I want to have a look at two things here. I want to... Um, I want to go dig deep today and have a look at two contexts. And the first one is in uh, chapter 2. And it starts from verse 16 through to chapter 3, verse 5. Oh, sorry. Chapter 3. I, I got that too close, didn't I? Verse 5. And do the dots underneath. But let's write the text out first here. Um, 3 verse 4. Now, you pick it up from, I found the one I had over. I'm, I'm doing it from the Passion Translation, if you're following me. I found the one. Well, let me come in closer because I don't know whether you can see that. Uh, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit closer. There we go. Now, let me just straighten that out and bring this over. I found the one I adore. Now, forgive me because I, I'm I'm doing capitals. I'm mixing my my fonts here because I'm doing lowercase and high, you know, capitals together. I just want to dot this in. It just, I don't know, there's something about this when you do it with the pen, it just fixes it in your mind. I found the one I adore. Isn't that wonderful? You know, the relationship with the Lord isn't, our relationship with the Lord isn't just a you know, in a sense where we just pray for our needs. It's got to come out of a love relationship. And a love relationship has to be two ways. And oftentimes, you know, I think Christians have been too bogged down with problems or difficulties that it's the relationship has been more like a shopping list, if you know what I mean. That we come into the presence of the Lord and we, we just give our list of things. Oh, Lord, help me in this. Oh, Lord, help me in that. Oh, Lord, bless so-and-so. It's good to just come into that relationship, first of all, a love relationship. And this is what the writer is saying here in the text. I found the one I adore. Isn't that wonderful? To adore, to be captured by his love. And I tell you something. If you let the love of God, it's a two-way thing. He adores us, as we've seen in previous readings, and I think that's been the thing that's uh, really blown some people away when they realize how much God loves them, how much, you know, that we are beautiful in his eyes. In one passage of scripture we read last week, we are beautiful in his eyes, and he can't resist us. He can't resist us. He loves us so much. When you think about that, he loved us so much that he gave. Love always gives. It always gives. And, you know, all ministry, you know, we, we hear a lot about ministry, don't we? And, you know, well, what's my ministry? What? But listen, listen, start with the love of God. <laughs> if you start in a relationship with him where you can say, with the text, I have found the one I love, or the one I adore, which is the Lord. And then when you find him, there's this, it, it, it's a back and forth thing, you understand? You're so in love with him, I tell you. You get so in love with God that your difficulties will become so small, your obstacles will become so small, your testings will not really be testing. It's like work, isn't it? If you are working in a place and you don't like it, you don't, if you love your work, if you're doing something that you, you are creative in, 
that God created you for and you love it, it doesn't seem like work. I, I said, I've said this before, I said to a friend in Phoenix, uh, you know, Rod, when he asked me the question, are you a workaholic, John? And I said to him, Rod, we were, we were drinking at the time, we were drinking the spirit at the time. That's a good way to be, by the way. Always have a drinking buddy. I said to him, you know, as we were, we were, we were messing around and he says to me, are you a workaholic? And I said to him, <laughs> I said to him, Rod, can you be a workaholic if you love what you do? In other words, if you love what you do, it isn't work. And that's the same with the Lord. That's the same with ministry. All ministry should flow out of an overflow of the love of God to you and I. What was it that, that caused these men of God in the past, like Wesley, John Wesley, to ride on horseback one length of the country to the other at the age, I think, 92, in his 90s? What was it that drove him? that motivated him, that energized him. It was his, re, re, his relationship with the Lord. I have found the one I adore. So that's, that's it's very basic, isn't it? Very simple. <clears throat> We've complicated it. We've complicated it with a lot of laws and regulations and a list of things to do. And it's just simply... Find him. Seek him out. When you seek me with all your heart, you will find me, the Lord says. Amen. <laughs> so let's go back to this text again. And uh, I found the one. I found the one I adore. What else does it say? No. Isn't this a, isn't it, I, in the Passion Translation, I'm doing my dots here to take it round as we go down. I caught him. I love this. Just write the words out and, and let the pen, let the pen become part of you and let it, let the anointing flow from the pen onto the paper and let the words begin to resonate in your spirit. I caught him. <laughs> Isn't that what, what does that give what does that bring to mind? I caught him. Let's just see if it says any more on that. I caught him number one. Number two we talked about this this morning and fastened. In other words, don't let this slip from you. Fastened myself to him. Isn't that wonderful? I fasten myself to him, number two. Oh, it's just so. You know, it's mind-blowing, isn't it? When you begin to write that, when you just read it, you, it, you can lose it. You can, it can come, the revelation can come at you and it's gone. Oftentimes, writers or poets would keep a notebook with them because they would get, suddenly they would get this, what it was really, they were getting into other realms and they would get these creative ideas and they had to write them down. They had to write them down and... Here the writer is saying, I found the one I adore and I caught him and fastened myself to him. So catching something and not letting it go. Don't let the love of God, don't neglect your salvation. Don't neglect your salvation. It can so easily slip through your fingers. If you read Mark chapter 4, one of the things that Jesus taught was about the sower. And um, am I too close to you there? Let me go back. Yeah, that's it. Um, 
it was the parable of the sower. And there are four things there. There's that number four again. That letter dal at the door. It opens you into something. Four things about the heart that he, he told us about. And if I can remember it by memory. Uh, the first one was a hard ground. With people that tread, you know, there's much coming and going. And when the seed falls on it, it there's no root. There's no depth. But the second one, and I think it was the second one, was that the seed fell in the soil, but it was the fawns and the busyness of life that choked the seed. So you see here, here he's talking about in, uh, in this verse, I caught him and I fastened myself to him and then he goes on to say this um i don't know what i can get you in closer there um that's it i fasten myself to him number three uh what's the third one refusing i'm just writing the verse out but do you see how the points come out as you Refusing to be feeble. Now, let me just say something about this. Refusing to be feeble in my heart. Again. So, you know, the Bragham's saying, look, I've had times... I've had times in my heart where I've been feeble. And doesn't the scripture say strengthen the feeble? Strengthen the weak arms, the weak knees. How, 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 how do you get feeble? Well, it's your conversation. You've got to be very, very careful on your conversation. Oh, I don't feel like it. Oh, my feet are killing me. Do you understand what you're doing? self prophetic you're prophesying to your body you've got to stop that we've got, and i say the same to i'm preaching to myself here you know we've got, it, it's our declaration of faith what we speak we create what we speak we create now there was a wonderful phrase i heard the other day and i can't it, it slipped my mind if i can remember it i'll i'll bring it in on monday to you um i'll i'll look it up and bring it in on monday but um, to be feeble is to be weak-minded. In other words, the battle takes place in the mind. It's in your mind that the battle takes place. How you feel, you know, your feelings feed your mind, your body. You know, sometimes you have to speak to your body. <laughs> you have to speak to your body and say, come on, come on, get it together. That's what I've loved about the devotionals, you know, our time together is it's disciplined me because I know I have to go live. I know whether I feel like it or not. There are days I do not feel like it. You know, when I say that, I mean, you know, physically I am not, you know, I'm tired, say, some mornings, early mornings, you know, and I have to get up. Not that I have to get up early. God wakes me up. You know, Jean doesn't believe me. She still thinks I have an alarm clock that goes off because dead on time, five, a.m. I'm awake, wide awake. And Gina, you know, she turned over and said, are, are you okay? Are you, are you? I don't know how you do it, but it's it's because I have to. I have to be there. I've determined. I've determined. I have fastened myself to him. I'm refusing to be feeble. I'm refusing to let the tiredness to let the times when I don't feel like now quickly have you ever have you ever been in a situation where you know uh, you were supposed to go to a meeting and you didn't feel like oh I'll stay in tonight and I'll put my feet up but then you somehow roused yourself and you went and it was the best meeting you ever went to do you know what I mean if God touched you and this is what this is really this, I caught him, 
I fasten myself to him, refusing to be feeble in my heart again. It's a declaration. And that's why I love that old hymn. He who would valiant be, follow the master. Let him in constancy. In other words, be consistent. Be consistent. Amen? Amen, amen. Okay, did we finish that verse? I caused him refusing to be feeble in my heart. Uh, let's finish it off uh, and go back to it. Number four. Uh, and I've got to bring you in there, haven't I? I and I've got to watch the time. Uh, now, I love this. Now, not tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. I've put a comma in there, but and I don't think it should be in there, but I'll bring him. Back. To the temple. within okay we could, there's a lot you could say about that um i'll bring him back to the temple within uh let me see there's a lot you could say about that i'll bring him back to the temple within do you know do you know what it brings to mind what paul said you are the temple you i me <laughs> we are the temple of the living God. We are living stones built together. When we come together, we're the temple. We are the church. I'm not going to church. We are the church. It says, I'll bring him back. It's that inward. It's that secret place where you can love the Lord, adore him, not let him go. Amen, amen, amen. Ah. Uh, in my innermost way, we're going to leave it there because I'm, I'm out of time and um, I want to do the reading. So let's go over to the reading. And uh, before we do that, let's just pray for Australia. Father God, in the name of Yeshua, we bring Australia to you. We bring your people that dwell in that land. We bring the governmental structure We bring, Father, the destiny that you have spoken before the world was created for Australia. And we say, Australia, Australia, we speak to you. We speak to your soil and we tell you, come forth, come forth, be enlightened by the Holy Spirit to what your destiny is. Be strong in the Lord. Send forth your missionaries in the name of Yeshua. Let the earth be blessed by what you produce in the kingdom of heaven. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go to the reading then. I am so happy you are mine. I love you. I want you to soak in the revelation of my love. You see, all those points that we've just brought out is really soaking, you know, writing it out. You're soaking, you're meditating on it. Today and every day. So that's a constant thing, consistency. Get into the habit, get a good habit of doing, you know, of meeting with God every day. I want you to know that the way you love me moves my heart. You are my delight. See what I mean about this back and forth, God speaking to us. You are my delight, and the offering of your life has my full attention. I've never overlooked one tear. See, he sees your tear. In fact, there's a scripture that says he, he puts our tears in a bottle. 
as you bowed low and surrendered your will to mine over and over again. That is a constant thing. That is a daily thing. It's not a one-off. Surrendering is not a one-off. It's a daily thing. I'm so pleased with the cry of your heart to be fully mine and to be consumed with my love. So now I will consume you. The fiery passion of my love for you will blaze upon your life in ways you've never known. Even now I'm working on your behalf. I am planning beautiful surprises that will bring you to your knees in thanksgiving and joy, and not only thanksgiving and joy, but awe, in awe of what he's doing. I can't wait for you to see what I have in store for you. I cannot resist those who freely and unreservedly give themselves to me, trusting me, even in the darkest valleys. Thank you for receiving my love. I am so happy that you are mine. And then the text, I found the one I adored. I caught him and fastened myself to him refusing to be feeble in my heart again. Song of Songs, chapter 3 and verse 4. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful to start the weekend? Just quickly then, uh, just some of your comments there. I see Larry's on. Uh, yeah, it's, it's afternoon, isn't it, Larry? Blessings to you, uh, Niagara Falls. Um, God bless you, Larry. Miss you. Uh, Kimo, in the Anai... In a, in, oh, uh, uh. <laughs> Let me bring that down here a bit, just so you can see it against the black there. In in the New International Version, that part is... Let me... Oh, you've gone off on me again here. Uh, hang on, Kimo. Stick with it. That part is, I held him and would not let him go. Song of Songs, chapter 3, verse 4. Uh, also, what are you saying, Kimo? The house, the word temple there can also mean house or home. It's that letter beta, Kimo. You know, that's, that's a house, isn't it? The picture value of that second letter. Uh, anyway, there we are. Uh, what can I do? Time's out. Time's gone. I've got to go. <laughs> I've got to pick John Mark up. Okay, he's got to cook the tea. He's got to cook. The, he's got to cook the supper. <laughs> amen. 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 Okay. God bless everybody. Have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you, Lord willing, Monday.